good day, dear students and viewer of Dep and Delhi Turuan. I am Maria Crescia Saitos SN1 from Marciano del Rosario Memorial National High School, your teacher presenter for this episode. Our lesson for this episode is identifying hazard and risk in the workplace. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to first identify the potential incidents, serious injury, and illness related to hazard and risk in the workplace. Second, distinguish the occupational health and safety measure in dressmaking. And last, express ideas effectively in understanding and applying the basic principles of occupational health and safety in the workplace while doing dressmaking tasks. Before we start our new lesson, first, I want you to look at this picture and analyze what's wrong about it. Can you tell the unsafe acts of dressmaker in the picture? Okay, let's do the test. What have you observed? Unsafe to work. Yes, very good. Dirty and sewing tools are not organized. That's correct. Unclean workplace. Okay, that's right. All sharp materials like scissor, pins, and etc. are scattered all over in the workplace. Yes, it's correct. Too risky. From those examples of unsafe acts of dressmakers, what are the worst possible results of these kind of words? Yes, that's an excellent idea. Workers or tailors can possibly be injured and be sick because of not following the safety measures in the workplace. To better understand and safety acts in the workplace, we will discuss and identify hazard and risk in the workplace. What is the difference between a hazard and risk? Yes, correct! Hazard is anything that may cause harm to an individual such as chemicals, electricity, open drawers, and inadequate ventilation. While risk is the chance of probability that a person will be harmed or experience an adverse health effect if exposed to a hazard. There are different types of hazard. Number one, physical hazard. A physical hazard is a type of occupational hazard that involves environmental hazard that can cause harm with or without contact. Number two, electrical hazard. An electrical hazard is a dangerous condition where a worker can or does make an electrical contact with organized equipment or a conductor. Number three, ergonomic hazard. Ergonomic hazard impact employers and workers and their families. Also, workplace design, awkward body mechanics or postures, repetitive movements, and other ergonomic hazard induce or contribute to a staggering number of cumulative trauma disorders. Number four, chemical hazard. A chemical hazard is any substance that can cause harm primarily to people. There are three steps used to manage health and safety A work. First, spot hazard. Second, assess the risk and manage changes. Safety measures have to be taken seriously, especially when sharp pointed objects are used, such as scissors, tacking pins, needles, and other equipment. To avoid such scenario, all employees depending on their jobs are required to cooperate in the strictest observance of safety le legislation, regulations, guideline policies, and procedures at all times. Remember, stay healthy and safe. Now, let me see if you still remember our lesson for this episode. Are you ready, kids? Let's apply what we have learned. I will be showing you different pictures, identify the hazard, and give the possible solution to avoid accidents in the workplace. Let me show the first picture. 
Yes, that is chemical hazard. You should use gloves or any protective equipment to protect from exposure to chemical hazards. How about this picture? That's correct. It is physical hazard. You should put duct tape on the wire so anyone will be safe. This picture. Correct answer. Very good. Ergonomic hazard. Do the proper seating posture to avoid back and neck pain. That's all for the meantime. When we get back, we're going to do the self-check. For now, let's have some break. And we're back! Again, what are the different types of hazard? Excellent! So why is it important to identify hazard and risk in the workplace? Yes, that's correct! Great answer! Let's have an activity! Are you ready? Okay, let's start! Get your notes and answer the following questions. Write P if the statement is true and F if false. Question number one. Emergency procedures have been devised to keep everyone safe. Number two. A hazard is any situation that has the potential to cause injury, illness, or death. Number three. If non-notification is made of an injury, sustained compensation can be obtained for that injury. Number four, to reduce injury, a risk control process accompanied by hazard management procedures need to be established. And last number, safety signs can prevent accidents. Okay, let's finalize your answer. Are you guys done? Let's check. Remember, honesty is the best policy. Here are the answers. Okay. Answer for number one. Yes, it's true. Very good. How about for number two? True. Yes, correct. Number three is false. Yes, that's right. Number four is true. You got it. And lastly, number five is true. Correct. Are you done checking? How are your scores? Wow, you did excellent work. That's all for this lesson. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned a lot. This has been your teacher presenter for this episode, Maria Crescia SN1. That's all. Goodbye and stay safe.